I get this morning. This is officially day seven. And the longest backpacking trip I've ever done has been four days. So this is day seven, including the fact that yesterday I didn't move my butt very much. That was seriously needed. I managed to eat quite a bit and I feel so much better this morning. I don't feel sleep deprived. I actually slept quite well for the first time in a week too. It's very early. I don't know if you can tell. I'm sure you can. I haven't had any coffee. <laughs> Sacrilege. But the campground was so damn quiet. And when you're packing up in the dark and you've got people sleeping in tents next to you, uh, running the the stove sounds like a jet engine. Even just packing up all my crinkly things. I don't know, I just wanted to get out of there. So I will stop at some point and make coffee. Otherwise I'm not gonna survive. I have a very, very long day. The longest day yet. I don't know if I'm gonna make it the whole distance, but I'm certainly gonna try. <laughs> I think that's all I have to say for now. Forest poops. just did a pretty steep road walk in the blaring sun. Now I'm really hot and sweaty. I haven't decided if I'm going to talk about anything specific today. I have a lot more topics on the go. Um, the diabetes is a big topic and I think I'm going to save that for a different day because that's a heavy hitting one. So today, today maybe I'll just talk about nothing. Actually, scratch that. So, I believe back there where the road access is, 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 where I have been dropped off twice before. So there's a, this is a route I have backpacked twice. And it's a route where we drive into Wyerton and we park our car, park our car at the uh, grocery store. And then we get a taxi up to here and hike back to the car over three days. I'm about to do it in like one day because that was back in the day when 
I, I'm not saying I was unfit. I definitely was, I was actually probably more fit, but camping equipment was heavier if you've watched my, my old gear versus new gear video. So it was very difficult to get your pack to a point where you could hammer out 20K. This is un, this is very surprising to me how much mileage that I've been able to do. Yeah, I've done it in pain. Yeah, it's been hard. But back in the day, which was a Wednesday, that's a Dane Cook reference, by the way. Uh, I think like 10 to 12 kilometers per day was about all I could manage. And that's because my pack was on average 40 pounds. I didn't own anything lightweight. The Ultra Lake, um, woo! Uh, the, the Ultra Light, existence of Ultra Light camping gear, I'm all over the place. Didn't exist, or not yet, or not to the point that it's at now. So, I'm really excited for today, from here until my camp spot, because that's a trip I've done twice, and the last time I did it, I did it with my brother Matt and no doubt I'm gonna find pictures to insert in these in this video and I'm hoping I can find some of the actual places we took those photos so I'm kind of over the next 20k is a walk down memory lane of the trip I did with my brother and for the record the reason why I <laughs> ended that because I got choked up because uh, I really do love my brother and him and his wife live out west now so I don't get to see him very often and uh, this was a it was such a memorable trip we did it with our two dogs at the time just the, well, the four of us really and on the second last day uh, my brother's dog Sobe had chased a squirrel off the cliff this is this is insane the story is insane. She fell off the cliff. And when you see how high some of these lookouts are, it is insane, like certain death. And where she fell off just happened to be where there was some brush down below. And not long after that, the cliff really went down to the water and there was a, a road with cottages on the bottom. So we couldn't access her from up top we knew she was alive we didn't know her state but we walked all the way down to the bottom walked down the trail he was running up every little side street calling her name and he eventually got her she had some scrapes and bruises but that's it nothing broken she was shaken up and we sat down at the beach that night because we were supposed to be camping that night and had um one more day to go and somebody drove up in a truck who happened to be a vet. What the, what are the chances? And they looked Sobe over and they said, no, she, she should be okay. She's not broken, but she's shaken up and she did have some cuts. And uh, this very nice veterinarian loaded the four of us into the, be the bed of her truck and drove us back to our car. And so we ended up only spending one night um, and then we got home and took care of her but she survived falling off this cliff. Unbelievable. That's ironic don't you think? Kind of suits the fact that I've got one real crooked toe that I have stubbed at least 10 times this morning. I don't know why. It's the shitty toe, I've stubbed it 10 times. Why haven't I stubbed the other toe? And look, the very first style. 